Hello guys. In the previous lesson, we obtained the correction form of a crank model and it's related to the spring inertia model of the crank model in the car, okay? And so, uh, in this lesson, we will focus on uh, how we're gonna create the model in the MATLAB Simulink application. The purpose of uh, these things uh, is that uh, we need to obtain the time response characteristics of this crank model okay and so in order to create a simulink model we should write the simulink in here in the command window and uh, push the button enter or we can push these things and so we need to create a blank model in here and so in the first place we should save this wheel model crank mill model in here and so we need to set the model configuration parameters as such the solder selection is selected by the fixed step and so solve details 1 e minus 4 or the 0 0.1 millisecond in the MATLAB simulink time okay and so in the first place we should create a MATLAB function body in here okay and so we need to change its name shaft model in here or crank model and so we need to open this stage and so <coughs> in the first place we need to create a integrator dynamics in here because the state space can be soluble in the integration factor okay and so z should be given in here and torque needs to be getting into this code and also the wheel model needs to f brake dynamics okay and so what about our output our output is that the state space equation okay z dot is equal to what a times z plus b times torque because the torque's input z is a state variable and b and a model gives us the state space representation of our model okay and so additionally we need to obtain the shaft degree in here in order to evaluate the result of these things and shaft torque okay because we have talked about it and the advantage of it okay and so by using the MATLAB simulink application and then we will get the time response of these things and so the torque of the loading on the shaft should be calculated by the machine element designs because the design both provide that we should drive the system with a specific velocity or the angular velocity but the shaft should not be broken in the process of these things okay and so we need to obtain these things in order to evaluate whether it's broken under this force or not and so this is the subject of the machine elements study and so you need to learn about how we are gonna design the shaft torque in the perspective of the machine elements or the material properties okay <coughs> and so this is our codes in here and we have this kind of <coughs> situation and so we need to add the integrator in here integrator means that this equation gives us or that this function gives us what the derivative of the state or the z dot and so in each every time we should integrate this and we should fat these things into the, the z one and so the solver can be useful in that condition okay and so this equation can be soluble and then 
we can use this analogy but with the same difference is that the initial condition should be a vector because we have the four times one vector theta theta dot x x dot okay and so the initial value should be assigned to zero at each time and so we can assign it the zero 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 and zero value okay and so in order to create the torque and f brake value we will uh, focus on in the later of this session but we need to first the dynamics of these things or we should create the a and b matrices in here with respect to the r equation form of these things because we obtained the a and b matrices and so we need to transform these things into the method one or in the coding one okay and so we can obtain the matrices in here like this one a is equal to the what a is equal to the one a1 a2 a3 a4 a5 okay and so zero one zero zero a1 zero a2 zero and so zero 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 one and a3 zero a5 a4 should be given at this moment okay and so <coughs> we need to uh, okay this the a4 and a5 but the z3 z4 a5 is should be written in here i can change the name of these things and so i notify this change in the coding okay and so this is the zero zero should be given in here and so the matrix constants should be given in here b1 is equal to the what b1 is equal to 1 divided by i crank and so 1 divided by i crank c is wrong but you should ignore it because i coding in this way i'm sorry okay a1 is equal to what the a1 i can split the screen like this one and so the a1 is equal to minus k equivalent divided by i crank a2 is equal to what kx divided by r times i crank and so a3 is equal to what kx divided by r times sorry i x because in this place and so we should change the a5 and a4 with the, each other and so a4 minus ct divided by r i x okay because the a5 is written in here but i split the definition of these things okay a5 should be equal to what the minus k x divided by r i x okay minus k x divided by r i x okay <coughs> this is the difference uh, but we should obtain the general notation like this one and a5 a4 and so the general notation is the same with the this one okay and so we should proceed with the system dynamics parameter in this notation okay because the, we need to drive the i crank k x r i x we should assign the some constants which is <coughs> the real in the real life application okay or the design parameters system dynamic parameters can be given by what firstly we need to calculate the volume value of these things pi l1 times d1 square <coughs> this is the volume of what the volume of the 
first cylindrical mill application okay and so v2 is equal to what p times l2 times d2 square okay because we state hold the thing like this one and so we should give the general specific constants related to this notation pi l3 times d3 square and so v4 should be equal to what p times l4 times d4 square okay and so <coughs> in order to calculate the m crank and so we need to add the row 4 times v4 we shouldn't select the row 4 but we should give the always the parametric and so if i'm changing the row 4 or density of the any material in here and so the m crank is also changed okay this is a parametric programming okay and so two times what the row 1 times v1 row 2 times v2 v2 and row 3 times v3 okay because the each of the 1 2 and 3 parts at each time to the, we have the two symmetric part of the cylindrical one cylindrical two and cylindrical three okay and so i vehicle or the inertia of the wheel should be calculated by the one divided by two times mv times r square r is the radius of the wheel and we the mass of the wheel and so the standard cylindrical notation we have obtained this kind of formula in order to calculate the wheel inertia okay and so i crank can be calculated by what this formula i4 plus two times i1 plus i2 plus i3 okay kx should be equal to what the one divided by k1 plus 1 divided by k2 plus 1 divided by k3 okay and so we need to get the inverse value of these things and so i x should be equal to what the i x in this notation should be written in here and so the i x i w divided by r m v times r m crank times r okay and so additionally cb is the damping ratio factor in here and so ct is controlled variable f brake divided by cb because if we push the braking system and then <coughs> we need to increase the damping ratio value and so this is the constants coming from the what the coming from the data sheet of the braking system or damping ratio okay and so what about this the we should to uh, calculate the i and the k factors in here <coughs> and so for inertia and spring coefficient i1 should be equal to what uh, we should go to the this slide i1 is equal to 1 divided by 2 row 1 times p times d1 square times l1 times d1 square okay this coming from our equation in here i2 1 divided by 3 times rho 2 times p times d2 square times l2 times l2 over square okay i3 is equal to what rho 3 times p times d3 <coughs> square times l3 square okay i4 is equal to the what 1 divided by 12 row 4 pi d4 square times l4 times l4 square okay and so <coughs> 
this is our inertia factor and so k1 is equal to what the k1 is equal to these things okay and so oh, we need to create a division factor in here and so 1 p times g1 times 2 times d1 over 4 and 2 uh, 32 times l1 and so k2 is equal to what k2 is equal to the e2 times 2 d2 times 2 d2 over 3 and divided by 4 times l2 square okay k3 <coughs> is the same as with the k1 but with the different parameters and so <coughs> this term p times g3 times 2 d3 over 4 32 times l3 divided by 2 because the torque is applied on the half of the l3 or the cylindrical 3 variable coming from this one okay and so this is our code in here and then we need to create the system parameters like this one and so we should give the whole constants in here okay system parameters so we can copy off these things because if we change these system parameters and then we can change the dynamics of these things and also the design in the real life application okay you should remember that we have designed the system like this one but if we change the system parameters or the row or the d1 d2 and then we can also change the design of this crank mill model okay so we need to add the mw which is a kilogram of the wheel and so r is equal to 0 0.2 and so d1 should be assigned to 0 0.05 5 centimeters d2 0 0.02 centimeters d3 0 0.05 centimeters d4 0 0.07 L1 should be assigned to 0 0.3 or the 30 centimeters. L2 0 0.5. L3 0 0.4. L4 2 times L2. And so the material property which is given by what? The row 1 is equal to 2 thousands. Row 2 is equal to 2 thousands three and so row three is ten thousands and so row four is four thousands <coughs> these whole numbers are arbitrary but uh, in the real life you should select the specific material properties on this selection and so g1 is equal to assigned to what the aluminium g1 10 270 times 10 over 6 and g3 is equal to g1 because the same material is used in here e2 10 times 100 times 10 over 6 okay this all hold the system parameters and in the next session we will create a model or we will test our model by designing the torque and the force breaking value okay